In this last video, we will do a couple of examples and illustrate some of the results that we've been working on so far. So in this example, we want to determine the line integral for this vector field shown there. And C is a curve from 1, 1 to 4, negative 2. Now, since the curve isn't given to us in a parameterized form, it just says C is a curve with this initial point and this terminal point, this is an indication that the integral is probably independent of the curve we choose. And if that's the case, then based on our results, we should be thinking, hey, this means it's probably a conservative vector field. Is that the case? It actually is. So we note that F is conservative with potential function F of X, Y equal to, now we could use that method of partial integration, which we did in the last example, and that is we integrate the first component with respect to X, introduce this constant in terms of y and then differentiate with respect to y and see if that gives us our second component and just sort of reverse engineer what it is. Or maybe we can just eyeball this and say I need my derivative with respect to x to give me a y squared over x squared. Oh, that means I should probably get a negative 1 over x for example so that the derivative is a 1 over x squared but then I'd also need the y squared up top. And so just doing the antiderivative of the first component with respect to x, this is what I'm guessing is the case. And so now I'll differentiate with respect to y and just see what do I get when I differentiate with respect to y. I get negative 2y over x. Ah, and that's the second component of f. So there is our potential function up to a constant. I could add an arbitrary constant on, on the end and still have a potential function as well. But there's our potential function. And so that means the integral f dot dr over that curve c is equal to the integral over that curve c of the gradient of f dot dr. And by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, that tells me that it's f at the terminal point minus f at the initial point. So that's by the fundamental theorem of line integrals and f at 4, negative 2, so that's a negative, negative 2 squared over 4, minus, and then f of 1, 1 is negative 1 squared over 1, and so that is negative 1 plus 1, or 0. And so there's the value of our integral. And note here, we computed the integral by using a fundamental theorem of line integrals and finding a potential function and evaluating at its endpoints. We didn't do some parameterization of the curve because in this case it didn't depend on the parameterization of the curve. All it depended on was the initial and terminal points and if we had a potential function, which we did. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. So in this example we've got our vector field given and we want to show that dp dy is equal to dq dx. So let's have a look at that. Maybe we should write down what P and Q are, just so we can see them. So there's our function P, and our function Q is x over x squared plus y squared. So that's P, and this is Q. So what is dP dy? Well, dP dy, we're differentiating p with respect to y, that's a quotient rule, so it's the derivative of the top, which is negative 1, times the bottom, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. And that works out to be, so we've got a negative x squared, and then a negative y squared plus 2y squared, so that becomes a y squared minus x squared all over x squared plus y squared squared. We also want to find dq dx. So that's the derivative of the top, which is x times the bottom. So that's x squared plus y squared minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. 
And so that is y squared minus x squared all over x squared plus y squared squared. And that's what we wanted to verify. These are equal. So at this point you might say, okay, dp dy is equal to dq dx. That means that this is a conservative vector field. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Remember our result. We'll scroll back to it. Our result said, where was it? Here it is, theorem six. If dp dy equals dq dx and the domain we are on is open and simply connected, then the vector field is conservative. So we need that additional condition that it's open and simply connected. And do we have that in this case? Well, apparently we don't because part B is asking us to show that the integral is not independent of path. Ah, so if I can show that it's not independent of path, then I know it's not conservative because if a vector field is conservative, these line integrals must be independent of path. So let's go ahead and work on part B. Let's show that these line integrals are not independent of path. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to construct two paths which have the same initial and terminal points and show that I get different values when I do their line integrals. And so if I take this as my x and y axes and I look at a curve which goes from 1, 0 to negative 1, 0, which is the upper part of a semicircle. Let's call that curve C1. So curve C1 is going to be R of t is cos t sine t. Those are, that's our parametrization of a circle, and in this case I want the upper portion. So I'm going to go t goes from 0 to pi. So that's our first curve C1, and maybe I'll be a little more explicit. It's going from the point 1, 0 to the point negative 1, 0. And so if I do my integral of this vector field f over the curve C1, then this is going to be the integral from 0 to pi f since I'm on a circle of radius 1, the x squared plus y squared just becomes 1. So my vector field f becomes negative y, so that's negative sine t. x is cos t. Then we've got dot r prime of t. That's going to be negative sine t cos t. And then we've got a dt there. So this becomes then the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared plus cos squared. Sine squared t plus cos squared t dt. So that's just the integral of 1 from 0 to pi. And so that has a value of pi. Now, if the integral was independent of path, then I should always get pi no matter what path I take from 1, 0 to negative 1, 0. In this case, I am going to take a path that goes the other way around, so the other part of that circle of radius 1. So it's going to go this way, from 1, 0 to negative 1, 0. I'll call that path C2. A parameterization of that path C2, maybe I'll call this r sub 2 of t, that I can use the same x component, but for the y component I'll use negative sine of t, just so it's got a negative of the one I used above. And then I'm still going from t goes from 0 to pi. And so in this case, the integral along f, or along c2 of f dot dr2 is the integral from 0 to pi of and in this case, it is, so again, what is f? f is negative y over x squared plus y squared and x over x squared plus y squared. But x squared plus y squared is 1, so this becomes negative y, or sine t, 
x, which is cos t, dot the r2 prime, so that's going to be negative sine t, and the derivative of negative sine t is negative cos t dt, and so that becomes the integral from 0 to pi of negative sine squared t minus cos squared t dt, so that's the integral from 0 to pi of negative 1 dt, which has a value of negative pi. So the line integrals of this vector field are not path independent. They depend on the path we take. My first path went from 1, 0 to negative 1, 0 and had a value of pi for the line integral. My second path went from the same initial point to the same terminal point and had a value of negative pi. So this integral is not path independent. And so that means our vector field cannot be conservative. And so here is an example of a vector field that's not conservative. However, it did have the property that dp dy was equal to dq dx. So what is the reason that it's not conservative then in this case? And it has to do with the domain. The domain of this vector field is not an open, simply connected domain. So let's just note Theorem 6, which is the theorem that says if dp dy equals dq dx and the domain you're on is open and simply connected, then your vector field is conservative. This theorem doesn't apply here. Theorem 6 does not apply in this case. In fact, it can't apply in this case because we know the result. We know that f is not conservative because we showed that its integral is not path independent. So theorem 6 does not apply in this case. Why doesn't it apply? Since the domain of our vector field is not simply connected. And you may say, well, how do you know that? What is the domain? I haven't written down the domain, but our vector field f is negative y over x squared plus y squared and x over x squared plus y squared. So that means we have problems at the origin because we'd be dividing by zero. So our domain d, it consists of all things except I'm not allowed to have the origin in there. And so we get everything out here except the origin is not in there and therefore the domain is not simply connected because I can find a path, any path that goes around the origin doesn't contain or doesn't enclose points that are in the domain. It encloses the origin, which is not in the domain. So it's not simply connected. And I use that result to construct my example up above. My example was I took one curve to go one way around the origin and the other curve to go another way around the origin. And so together, these two curves enclose the origin, but the integral along one of the curves is different from the integral along the other curve. All right, so that's a bit of a surprising example. We've got partial derivatives that behave as we wanted them to for a conservative vector field, but in this case, this vector field is not conservative, and it has to do with the fact that the domain it's defined on is not simply connected. Alright, so that's it for this example and this section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.